What is decentralization? Decentralization is a global phenomenon. It affects all aspects of society, including efficiency, equity, and microstability. A growing body of literature focuses on economic rationale for decentralization. In this video, we will define some of the more important terms and discuss some of the challenges associated with this service and this type of centralized banking system. We'll define some of the most important terms and discuss how this type of information is governed. We'll also understand what decentralization means and how it affects your economy. So let's go ahead and talk about that. The most obvious benefit of decentralization is reduction of a need for a central authority. A blockchain, for example, has no central authority. Instead, the nodes of the network are validated with each transaction using an agreed upon system. It works like a field of grass without one particular plant controlling the others. If a single plant is pulled out, the rest of the field is unaffected. Another advantage of decentralization is that it's easier to scale up. While the main organization is still in one location, other locations can run independently of each other. This allows them to customize their approach to the needs of the new markets. Ultimately, it's about building trust and transparency. But if you're worried about censorship, consider these other benefits of decentralization. They can help prevent cyber attacks and protect your business. One dis disadvantage of decentralization is that it can be more costly than centralization. In order to scale up, you need to use communication systems to make sure that everyone has access to the same information. This will save you time and money. In addition to this, you need to invest in communication systems to keep your employees and customers informed. This way, you'll be able to ensure your business doesn't suffer a security breach. A common downside to decentralization is that it can be vulnerable to common mode failure, which means that all nodes will go down at the same time. The same rogue employee can also compromise multiple nodes, causing the system to crash. Even a $50 million threat to a single person won't matter when 10 people are threatened. The same can be said for a distributed system where all nodes are used the same client software. Another disadvantage of centralized systems is that there's no guarantee that all users will be happy with the decisions made by top management. This can happen because of a lack of trust between managers and the employees. In a decentralized network, everyone can interact freely and no one will be censored. If you're in a country where, there's, where this happens, decentralization will be more effective. The key to this, a successful decentralization is a strong culture of openness and communication. The advantages of decentralization include a higher level of self-sufficiency. If an organization is centralized, it will be more vulnerable to coercion. For example, targeted DOS attacks are an effective means of coercion. Having employees in a different country will lead to less trust. Therefore, decentralization will help prevent coercion. This is a major benefit for a company that wants to stay competitive. The biggest advantage of decentralization is that it eliminates the middleman. In centralized systems, there is no accountability. In decentralized systems, the development team of a company is accountable to all of its employees. This makes it difficult for them to coerce people. In addition, it is not possible to know who is responsible for what, but the advantages of a decentralized system are more effective and more efficient. So let's say that again. It's not possible to know who's responsible for what, but the advantages of a decentralized system are more effective than centralized systems. They are more transparent and more efficient. Decentralization is important for organizations that want to avoid centralized control. It also allows for companies to maintain a high level of customer service and security, which is essential for organizations that rely on technology to run their business. However, decentralization does not solve all the problems. In some cases, it can increase cost. For example, a large corporation can use more expensive servers, having many servers in different locations for lower costs. In a decentralized system, the management team is more streamlined. This is because it's less fragmented. As a result, decision making and makers can be more focused on effectiveness. For example, it's important for the CEO to have money freedom when dealing with subordinates. If the CEO is busy with other tasks, he may not be able to make quick decisions or make right decisions. In a decentralized system, the management teams are much more streamlined. So we're talking about decentralizing for the financial world. One example of this type of financing is the form of cryptocurrency. Unlike traditional financial institutes, there are new companies 
and these are computer controlled, which allow for operation without a central authority. This allows them to issue loans, pay interest on holdings, and improve interest rates. In addition, decentralized financial companies do not require personal information or collateral. As a result, they are more competitive. The technology is also proving useful for startups in other industries, such as the travels industry. The biggest advantage of decentralized finance is the ability to provide uncensored access to global finance services. This is a major benefit compared to traditional forms of finance because privacy is something that people value. In addition, censorship is one of the more common threats to privacy. Therefore, building a censorship restriction product is key to the growth of this type of finance. Those who do not wish to be censored are more likely to become interested in it. Why decentralized systems are a great advancements in terms of efficiency, equity, and microstability, they do have some challenges. Many experts believe that the world of finance is better served when it is governed by a single central authority. But it is important to note that decentralization is not a piscina for every problem. Various forms of decentralization are still in the early stages. A primary advantage of decentralization is finance when it's used at the, so that its users retain custody of their wealth and the process of the transactions are secure without the involvement of a central authority, in addition to allowing users to transact more freely without a central authority, decentralized finance will allow developers to experiment with more financial instruments. By providing an open source platform for developers, it will enable them to create financial products and services at a faster pace. While traditional finance has its disadvantages, the benefits of decentralized finance cannot be overstated. It is an alternative to traditional finance and can provide financial services without geographical barriers. However, while it has been difficult for traditional finance institutions to reach remote areas, blockchain has had its potential to completely eliminate these limitations. They can offer better customer experience, make their trans actions transparent. This way, consumers can choose the best financial system for them. Another benefit of decentralized finance is that it provides users with access to global financial services without censorship. This is a significant difference between traditional finance and decentralized finance. Because people value privacy, it's essential for a decentralized finance service to be a good censorship-proof system. A good example is a product of um, Ethics's decentralized insurance platform, which allows users to create smart contracts. Moreover, decentralized finance may be able to help a number of industries. This includes investment funds and banks, which can be accessed by many parties simultaneously. Currently, the world's financial system is centralized in terms of security, but not the future. Decentralized finance services will allow users to access finance funds without intermediaries. With the right tools and knowledge, however, these new services will be a great option for people in the field of finance technology. Although decentralization has numerous benefits, it is not a perfect solution. For example, it is not possible to make all the transactions decentralized. A decentralized system is a good way to ensure that all stakeholders are kept informed. Further, it's easier to identify and track the financial activities of other users. A decentralized system is likely to be hacked than a less likely, excuse me, to be hacked than a centralized one. The centralized system is definitely less likely to be hacked than a central system. Another benefit of decentralization is that it can reduce the bureaucracy of traditional financial services. With decentralized financial so services, people have access to more options and can borrow money as they need it. There are two types of main decentralized finance. There's peer-to-peer -peer and there's pool-based. With peer-to-peer -peer lending, the borrower borrows directly from the lender, while pool-based lending allows for the lender to pool liquidity across multiple lenders. These advantages make it worth considering these types of lending. So let's talk about why decentralize. What does decentralization mean in terms of why should you decentralize? Why decentralize? In simple terms, it means to split technology over a network of computers. Blockchains, for example, operate this way and require consensus on any change made by the network. But by decentralization, you can ensure that you take the data and store it across the same uh, network in the same ledger, which is especially important if you have millions of users. This model can reduce a single point of failure, which can be problematic. The number of users using decentralized networks is higher than ever, so the chances of a hack are significantly higher. 
One way to counter the risk is by limiting the number of centralized servers. A centralized system can be compromised and coins stolen. By contrast, a decentralized system will have a much lower chance of being hacked. This means that it's far safer. And equity and wealth is often associated with monetization and um, repressive control. With centralized networks, the likelihood of intrusion is high, as well as the amount of transaction as they increase. Even worse, the entire exchange can be hacked and stolen. Decentralized networks are far safer than central systems, as there is no central authority to monitor or regulate their activities. In contrast, decentralized networks can benefit from increased competition. Furthermore, decentralized systems are more secure. If your data is stored on a unified computer, a single hacker can steal all your data and coins. The problem with centralized systems is that they are susceptible to a variety of intrusions. The smallest intrusion can lead to a complete shutdown of an exchange, resulting in massive loss of value. A decentralized system requires trust, which is essential in a monetary system. Cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin currency have been a perfect example of a decentralized system in action. If one single company fails, the entire system will collapse. A decentralized network can be a safer alternative to a centralized network. It can make it more secure and a centralized exchange more efficient. A decentralized system is made up of millions of computers around the world. The software on these computers is distributed and not controlled by a centralized organization. If an individual can easily access it from anywhere, it's safe. And if there's no central authority, the security of the network is in much better shape. The key benefit of decentralization is that it can prevent systematic failure. If you think about it, a decentralized network allows you to control what happens to your data without allowing it to be controlled by a central authority. This eliminates the need to rely on a centralized exchange, which is prone to hacking and other misbehavior. In addition, decentralized is more, much more secure. It will not only save your coins, but also keep them out of the hands of hackers. The main benefit of decentralization is that it's more secure. A centralized exchange can be hacked by hackers and your coins can be stolen. A decentralized system will not have the central point to be attacked. It will be less prone to uh, collusion. While the risk of centralized systems are lower, decentralization can be safe. The risk of corruption is greatly reduced in a distributed network. This is a huge benefit to society. When we decentralize, we avoid systematic failure. The possibility of a centralized failure increases as the volume of transactions increases. The entire exchange can be hacked and your coins can be stolen. Therefore, decentralized exchange is safer. The risk of a single point of failure is low. There is no central authorities. Instead, multiple participants manage the network to prevent bad behavior. Unlike a centralized exchange, decentralization is more secure. The biggest disadvantage of a centralized exchange is the possibility of a large number of threats. The risk of a centralized exchange is higher as the volume of transactions increases. The risk of centralized systems is also very high. If the system has too many central servers, there's a high possibility of a centralized attack. Similarity. Decentralized systems are vulnerable, but not as vulnerable as centralized systems. So let's talk about that again. Similarly, decentralized systems are vulnerable, but not like servers that are in high probability of attack from a centralized attack. With decentralized systems, their vulnerability is from censorship, which could lead to a high degree of censorship. One of the advantages of decentralization is that it allows for local political interests to have a greater say in decisions. In centralized systems, central government officials are in charge of the major and majority of the decisions, while the regional governments are responsible for making them. In a decentralized system, local political groups may oppose policies at a national level. In one case, a prominent governor ban a donor-funded family planning project. This is the type of situation that is a good example of how the control is in a centralized system. So let's talk about decentralized exchanges. So in centralized system, you see a lot of corruption and a lot of um, potential for collusion and a lot of threats. But in decentralized exchange, as a general rule, decentralized exchanges are safer than regulated ones. Unlike regulated markets, decentralized exchanges store user funds in their own wallets and are not subject to central authority oversight. This means that they can be attacked more easily and are less likely to go down maintenance. However, despite the advantages that they are not without disadvantages, for one, they only work with cryptocurrency assets and do not support FIAT. 
Therefore, fiat transactions are more expensive and require banks to process. In addition, dollar transactions cannot settle instantly with like blockchain-based ones. Although decentralized exchanges are safer and cheaper than centralized ones, they also have their own problems. These issues can be mitigated through the use of private platform. The architect of a decentralized exchange gives users complete control over their funds and information. The downside to this approach is that there is only one single point of failure for a hacker. A centralized exchange has complete control over all aspects of its operation and will make decisions on its own. A major drawback to a centralized exchanges are their vulnerability to hacking. Because user funds are held on a single platform, they are more likely to be stolen. These exchanges are often exchanged for scams. The most common scam is uh, Quadrant CX, which was hacked by a group of individuals. A well-developed decentralized exchange is more likely to be secure and profitable. A well-developed system can prevent this problem. Another major drawback to decentralized exchanges is that users must remember their crypto wallet passwords. In addition, decentralized exchanges do not allow trading of fiat currencies for digital ones. In addition, users have to memorize their cryptocurrency passwords. And again, this is something that they can't make a mistake on. This may cause confusion, so it's easier to buy and sell in regulated environment. These drawbacks are just a few of the benefits of decentralized exchanges mixed in with some of the drawbacks. Why centralized exchanges own and operated by a central authority, exchanges are not. So instead, users can not integrate the DEX directly to their wallets. Furthermore, there's no single point of access to user data and assets on a centralized exchange, making it more difficult for hackers to take advantage of openness. This feature is a especially important in decentralized exchanges because while centralized exchanges have a centralized authority, it cannot control funds. While centralized exchanges are more secure, they are more prone to fraud. Because they are centralized, they are typically target of hackers. Their liquidity is maintained by keeping user funds on a platform. Moreover, they are prone to exit scams. For example, the company QuadX website had been shut down during a scam. It's not uncommon for centralized exchanges to exchange in exit scams. Unlike centralized exchanges, a DEX is not controlled by a single person or entity. This makes it difficult to define a responsibility part of. As a result, a DEX can be more vulnerable to fraudulent trading due to the lack of centralized authority. But these limitations aside, a DEX is far from idea. And why it does not have a single central authority, it is more secure than a centralized exchange. Compared to centralized exchanges, decentralized exchanges are cheaper. They are safer, they are more secure, but they are also prone to some drawbacks. They also have the issue of security that can be compromised by its reliability on a single entity. By contrast, the DEX relies on multiple people to operate a single DE. Further, it is also possible to be vulnerable to hacks. The exchange can be hacked. A DEX can be more secure than a centralized exchange. By maintaining user funds on its platform, a DEX is more secure and cheaper, and a purely centralized exchange can't compete with that. It is also safer, but there are some disadvantages to using it. A centralized counterpoint are prone to hacking and exosams. Among them is the fact that decentralized exchange is not controlled by a governing body. Because there is no central point of control, a DEX relies on the number of users to ensure stability. If users do not have to create accounts or provide personal details, which reduce the risk of identity theft, this also minimizes the risk of fake trading volume. It also lacks Know your customer regulations, which are essential to ensuring the safety of the financial market. So if you want to participate in decentralized exchange spaces, DEXs are the way to go. So I hope that information has been helpful. Please like, comment, subscribe if you would like to see more information on decentralization.